Hi, I know it says Paul Hodgson on the timetable, but I've jumped in to steal a few minutes at the beginning because I wanted to provide a little extra uh, context. So hi, I'm Martin Dugiamis from Moodle, and um, you, you know Moodle, I think, a lot of you, as the, our LMS, and we have a lot of other projects. In case you haven't seen it lately, we've spent two years recently revamping the interface of Moodle. So there's a Moodle 4.0 came out recently, and it looks a lot better. This is how it looks now. But I wanted to just quickly talk about AI because I've not heard very much about it yet at the conference and um, it's very important to the topic that we're talking about here. Um, so OpenAI is one of the uh, big projects in AI in the world and uh, a couple of, you may not be aware of what's happening in this field as things are accelerating exponentially and these are things that are happening in very recent times, in the last months. So, this is a commercial site built on top of the AI GPT-3 that comes from OpenAI. This is just an example of a, uh, a commercially available app that will help you write anything. So here we are with a title. Uh, you enter in the title, it then suggests a, a first paragraph for your article. Then it says, uh, okay, here are some suggested headings for your article. You can tweak all of these as you go along. Um, so after you've tweaked your headings and your article, uh, uh, the, um, the, the headings and the title, it then generates an entire essay, a full article. Now, you would not know that a human hadn't written this. It's written very well, it reads well, um, and this is something that all your students could do tomorrow, right now, to, to generate an essay or any, art, any sort of a, that kind of assessment, you know, especially relating to the last uh, discussion, we need to have alternative assessments because this form of assessment is pretty much dead. Th this, will, this will pass any plagiarism filter because it's original. If you hit it, generate me another essay, it'll write you another essay on the same topic in any language. Uh, and this is not just essays, it's any written material you can imagine. Could be a website, could be a marketing document, anything. Now, the same algorithm is a general purpose algorithm, that's why it's GPT-3. So here it is writing a poem about a confused raccoon in computer programming class. So, you know, I sit in my chair and stare at the screen. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. I'm just a raccoon in a computer programming class. Now, I won't read the rest, but it's a short, funny poem written by an AI. Would you like to see that raccoon? Sure. The, this same AI can generate photographs. So this is a, not a real photograph. It's not cut and pasted from anywhere. It is generated pixel by pixel and grown into a viable image based on that's the only prompt it was given. Here's an illustration style of Elon Musk checking Twitter. I mean, if you saw that in New Yorker, you would not think it was out of place, right? He's academic researchers before a deadline in the style of Edvard Munch. He's the guy who made the scream. Uh, a squirrel dressed as a Tibetan monk. R2-D2 made from bamboo sticks. This doesn't exist. Generated in seconds. We are facing an onslaught of fake news. The, a, these AIs are going to be generating a lot of the content that we see. And this is very important for what we're talking about, which is education, because education should be responsible for communicating ethics and truth in this environment. I mean, we are used to a meme-filled you know, environment of distraction. You know, look at TikTok and YouTube and everything else on the internet. But how do we, as educators, steer away towards sustainable development goals? How do we help our next generations through this information or disinformation mess to actually achieve uh, good things. And so Open Ed Tech, you might have heard it mentioned a couple of times, but I just, uh, there is a, we have a, some ideas here on how to solve this with technology infrastructure. And if you, I, I won't go into it now, but come and find me if you're interested. Um, I would recommend you come to openedtech.global and fill in the contact form. On that site soon there'll be a white paper and a lot of other stuff that explains a lot of this and I hope you can join me. 
Moodle Net, however, is one project from Moodle that is focused on the quality problem in OER. And I'll hand over to Paul to keep talking about that. Over to you, Paul. Thanks, Martin. <clears throat> Thanks for opening those kettles of fish that get everybody off the subject. That's great. Um, I wanted to talk about MoodleNet. That's why I'm here. I look after MoodleNet. This is our ecosystem for building OER uh, resources and sharing. Um, however, I just want to go off script a little bit because I've been sitting in any session in this conference which mentioned OER. This is my first time here. I'm obviously a tech guy, but I'm also an educator. I was in higher education for many years. Um, and I listed the pain points that I've been hearing uh, as I've been going around different sessions. Uh, people saying, um, finding OER. That was one question mark. I don't want to search many repositories to find my, the OER that I can use. I want one place. So we've seen people talking about how to link them together, how to um, add repositories into a search engine, and things like that. Second one, copyright and licensing. How do we ensure that we don't have copyright infringement? How do we ensure that things are licensed correctly? Third one, connecting repositories. So we have lots and lots of OER repositories out there. How do we connect them all together? How do we get experts to curate in their area of expertise so that people can find them and follow them? How do we maintain standards? So we have standardized OER across all of this, everything that I'm talking about. How do we make it multilingual so we don't leave anybody behind? And how do we think about quality? I'm here to introduce you to something that addresses all of these which is MoodleNet. Um, we're working on an o ecosystem for OER, which is open, free, extensible, it will connect, and it will address all of these quality issues. Let me run you through it a little bit. So, it's there right now, Moodle.net, as a service. You can go right now on your phone and you can have a look at it. It's, uh, it's out there and it is uh, being built as we speak, and people are contributing OER materials as we speak. Essentially, this allows anybody at any institution anywhere, as a person, as an institution, to add OER resources to a central system. You can add it directly to MoodleNet, but you can actually have your own MoodleNet as well. So the, the software is out there free and for installation. You can take it, install it, adapt it yourself as well. And the, there's three main ideas behind MoodleNet, and I'm going to go through those right now. Firstly is the resources themselves. Now, we started with using the standards of um, the ISCED so that any resources that go into the system are tagged with those standards. So you can actually follow a standard and find resources within that standard. Secondly, we will then interpret these resources into what's, what they are, MIME types, for example. MoodleNet will accept any MIME type of any resource, and you can see a little screenshot there of some resources that if you go to the homepage of MoodleNet right now, they are there, and it's telling you what they are, it is giving you a preview of what they are, and it's telling you who has uploaded this as well directly on that, fr on that front page. Those are curated by us, but eventually they're going to be um, put there automatically, personalized for you as a user. Resources themselves can then be filtered. We've had various sessions on, well, okay, it's all very good to have a, a massive list of resources, 100,000 things strong. How can I filter those? Well, you can filter them and you can order them in terms of popularity um, and relevance and things like that as well. And I just wanted to show you one resource there um, from uh, somebody who uploaded something 22 days ago. I took this screenshot yesterday so you could see how old it was and the sort of thing that we're, we're trying to do. So what you have there is a title, which is part of the search index, so you will find anything if you search on those keywords. You have, you see it says teacher training with subject specialization, that is the ISED category, and you can click on that and find anything in that category. It then has a picture, that's an image that the user has uploaded, just to, to preview. Um, we are conscious that faculty members don't necessarily have the time to make this look very nice, so as you add a resource, if you don't have any nice images and you want to attract people to your resource, We've inbuilt Unsplash, if you're aware of Unsplash, the open source um, picture repository, so you can add Unsplash images to your resources straight away. And finally, at the bottom, you've got a description. And we're encouraging people to put a description in which is about how you've used this resource, how has it been useful for students. And then on the right, we get to the profile itself, the person, come to that in a moment. Underneath there, 
MoodleNet is designed to work standalone with any LMS and with Moodle, of course with Moodle, because we want it to be able to reach potentially 40 million registered Moodle courses within a couple of clicks. So if you have that, and you'll notice here at the top, I'm not even logged in. It's an anonymous system. This is totally open. I can click that Send to Moodle button. It will ask me where my Moodle installation is, and it will put it into my course, just like that. And you'll notice that that has been um, labeled as a Moodle file. So it knows that this is a Moodle file, and you can use it in Moodle. Okay. Then we look at the standardization. So we've got license types. We're using Creative Commons 4 right now. Um, we have a type of, so this is an IEE LOM, learning object model, basis of the type of resource it is. What level it is, whether it's adult, primary, K-12, they're all there. Um, when it was created and what language it's in. Now you'll notice at the moment the um, interface is in English, but it actually already has lots and lots of multilingual content in there already. And uh, we are working on contributions to translate the interface uh, to something in any language. There's another one, just another language, just to show you the sort of things that people are doing um, recently. But this is the, the key. We, one of the pain points was, how do we get experts to curate? Not necessarily create, but curate content. So in MoodleNet, if you do sign up, it's a simple validation process to your email. Um, essentially, you are allowed to then create collections. And these are collections by one user, essentially in any area you like and call it anything you like. That collection could then be any resource from any person put together into one place that can then be followed by other people. So you can do it based on a subject, based on an interest, based on anything you like. So anyone can become the teacher here. You can have students doing this to become the teacher. Um, it's really open to everybody. We feature some again. If you go to the homepage, you'll see some featured collections there. And you start to see at the bottom there, we're starting to feature some authors. So the authors that have the most popular resources and things are getting featured as well on the front page. And the aim of this really is to reward. It's, and I know it's a very basic reward at the moment, but this will get better. And you have a, a, a curated content collection there um, in the English language as well. These are all available right now. You can have a look at them online. Um, because we had the uh, um, uh, original keynote on, I created a little collection of NASA resources directly from NASA for you as well. You can see that that's my MoodleNet account, and, uh, and you can follow me and get things like that. Now, finally, we talk about profiles, because we want to be able to recognize and reward people for their content contributions. Now, at the moment, you will see a bunch of profile pictures there. And underneath, you'll see some little statistics. And there's one which is um, essentially a star. And a star means kudos. This, this user has this many kudos on the system. And the more kudos is based on the number of likes you attract on your resources. And what happens with that is in the search results, when people find it, they can filter by the most popular resources. And that's what we're reading. We're reading how many kudos does this resource have um, as a result. And you'll find then that you get featured the more kudos you have. So those are the featured authors as of today. And in your profile, we then allow you to message users if you want to. So if you are a, a logged in user to Middlenet and you want to contact somebody who is an expert in a certain area, there is a messaging function. But conversely, there's also a content filtering and reporting function just in case it is an open system um, to keep uh, inappropriate things off the system as well. Now, coming soon, what are we going to do? So we're, we're constantly working on this. And as Martin alluded to before, we're working towards this ecosystem cloud um, of OER resources. So the first thing I want to talk about is federation. Now, federation basically means linking things together. So if you were to take MoodleNet software, install it on a server somewhere, and then you would be able to put your content into that server and don't want to deal with Moodle.net at all, you can do that right now. Now, this year, you are going to be able to click a little button which says federate this content. That will then copy not the data, but all the metadata, the search data, into Moodle.net so that if anyone's searching on the central repository, they will find your resources on your system as well. And also, vice versa. So if someone's searching on yours, you will find other resources that come from Moodle.net. Now imagine that with 100,000 servers. All federating content, no point of weakness, all connected, but you can search any of them from any point in the network, and it's all free and open. That's quite powerful, and, and this is why we're working on this very intensively this year. Finally, making finding things easy. 
Um, at the moment, our search results are based basically on keywords, and then you can order them um, by relevance, by popularity, or by recentness uh, in the system. But we're going to make this better. So this is going to be more gamified. It's going to be more rewarding. We're working with the university who have designed a very elaborate and complex award system for faculty based around digital competencies and Digicomp Edu standards and badges, um, where it will count towards their continuing professional development of their faculty if they share, create, and do things on Middle.net that we can track. So that's coming as well this year. And the aim of this is academic quality. So we could have 5,000 moderators sitting around the world as part of community moderating resources. We don't believe really, that will happen, and it's certainly not something that Moodle would do anyway. Um, but then, how do we do this? Well, we have to try and make sure that people, we reward the right behavior. So that's coming again this year. And finally, those of you who do use the LMS, at the moment, um, if you are on 3.9 or later and you want to add an activity to a resource and you have MoodleNet ticked as enabled in your site setup, you can bring content straight in. You'll see it at the bottom of the page there, from MoodleNet to Moodle. That's one way at the moment. So you can just send it straight to your course. We want to do it both ways. So later this year, we are improving that integration between LMS and MoodleNet so that if you are in Moodle, you can say, share this activity on MoodleNet to the OER repository, and it will send it straight to MoodleNet. Maybe not our MoodleNet, but maybe your MoodleNet. So you then have your own shareable infrastructure of activities, resources, whatever you want it to be. It could be a graphic, it could be a whole course, whatever you want to share. How do you want to get involved? Well, we're looking for you to use it, to just use it as a free service, um, contribute things and see what happens um, if it gets used. Um, we really like to know what you think about it. Say we try to go through the pain points. Um, we would like to do more of that to find out what your pain points are and how we can address them. And as Moodle as a community, as we all already work with the LMS, you know, you can propose features, people can vote for them. Um, something we would like to do for those of you that would really like to get serious and have got a lot of resources about this is to help you test it as a case study. So we will do a limited number of these to help you get MoodleNet installed and working in your resources on it so that you can, uh, you can use it um, on your own server. And of course, if you can help us find developers and funding, that's always great. Um, and we can all give back to the education community, which is the philosophy behind this. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, happy to answer them. We can also field questions for Martin as well, if you have any. Uh, thank you very much. Thank very you. impressive. Um, very interesting. Uh, how about, uh, I was thinking about the um, privacy aspect of uh, user uh, data. So uh, you were mentioning that um, users, uh, which in the case of our institution would be teachers, uh, mm -hmm. can uh, get their profile information public. Um, how, is the, uh, how is this... Um, yeah, how, how, how are privacy concerns uh, fit? Okay, how do, yeah, that's a good things? question, thank you. So it's fully GDPR checked, so everything we're doing is GDPR checked, and when you access Moodle Net, you've got to agree to all of that as normal. Um, also, we don't actually give any information out other than the user volunteers, so you'll never find an email address published. You'll never find anything other than the profile name and a description of who I am if you look at it. So actually, there's nothing given. Obviously, if you are giving to an OER system, you might be giving away that in your resources anyway, which we can't control. Um, but uh, that's the best we can do for now. Please. Yeah. And um, would a single sign-on uh, possibly, would that be possible, for example, just to have uh, be a user from an institution? Absolutely, and one of the things that's happening right now with the team is they're designing an extensible, so you can, well, there's lots of single sign-on options, and we have five requests for different single sign-on extensions, so we're making it available for developers for you to do it, so you can do one and give it back to Moodle community. Great, yeah. thanks. Okay. Anyone else? Um, th this is brilliant. Um, I was waiting for it um, since. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm, I really like it. I'm working with Moodle uh, in my institution, and I would like to know if it's possible to sh check 
content that are for the institution and some other content that are shared with the rest of the world or to, to, to be able to, to select with which resources for just local uh, things or for... You can do that with your own installation, obviously you can do that, yes. And you don't have to, there's no option to federate everything. Martin's got his hand up, wants to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, one public, one private. Yeah. Yep. You just have two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anyone else? Any There's other one down here. Don't be shy. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, actually, you made me love more and more Moodle. I'm a Moodle <laughs> advocate, but... Uh, I'm very pleased sometimes, Martin's here to Yeah, hear sometimes good. you're forced to use other stuff. So maybe for decisions that I'm not responsible for, my question... I have two questions. My question would be, how can this, can this potentially be interoperable or integrate with other LMSs? Okay. Uh, and in Egypt, actually, there is a massive implementation of a solution that's called Thinky. I don't know whether you know it. I have never heard. Before heard the government it, yeah. spoke of it, I've never heard of it before. But anyways, so this is my first question. The second thing, uh, we have all been into OER initiatives ourselves in the MENA region, myself and Lilia. We have launched a portal, uh, OER Wiki at MENA, and there are different resources. But the thing... Uh, uh, we'd like to do, since we, you said that you uh, ask us help with your institution, and I've seen also the NASA page, I would like to ask to which extent can we contribute things that we would be labeled institutionally, not, not Rada, but Alexandria University Egypt, for instance, like, like the thing we said about, uh, we've seen about NASA. Mm -hmm. So integration and institutional pages. So Thank integration you. has been designed to be independent. So Although you saw a send to Moodle button, if you would like a send to your system button, that is a, an extensible feature that you could do. You could sponsor. You could have that done by a developer, no problem. Um, but it is also designed to be just download and upload if those systems don't provide that facility because it could be the LMS doesn't allow that. Um, so, yes, absolutely, it's, uh, it is like that. No problem. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So if, if you look at MoodleNet, there are some institutions on there who are contributing as institutions. So they don't identify the, uh, the faculty member or group of faculty. It's really how you set up the, pro the user profile. Absolutely, yes. And that, there's no real gauge. That's totally up to you. Ah, okay. So then as I think, it's, only, it's because they decided to contribute like this. But there is no approvals with, or agreements with the institutions in order to do this. No, it's totally open. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Any other questions? Yep. Maybe by the time I get there, what is the growth projection for the next two years for the new product? Exponential. Uh, we're finding already, we launched this version of MoodleNet back in September. We're constantly um, releasing new tweaks and versions and functionality um, to it. 350,000 people looking for resources at the moment. Yes, thank you. It's impressive what you are doing, yes. Um, I would like to know in the keyword search, uh, you know, how, how do you find appropriate resource? I mean, how your indexing uh, is made to uh, find the most relevant for a keyword search? You're absolutely right. And that comes back to, to this point here, making finding easy. And I know your academic research is in this area. So, um, so yes, we, at the moment, it's a basic keyword search that checks just keywords on the past title and the description. That's all it's doing right now. But then you can order and filter those um, to try and get the most popular ones at the top. So the better search is the person using the right keywords right now. However, you know, having seen the, thing, the technology that's going on in terms of semantics, we saw yesterday in one presentation, really, really nice. And we were looking at that, putting that into MoodleNet as well. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm allowed to ask a second question. So that's nice. Maybe it's hyper specific. In that case, let's uh, meet afterwards. Absolutely. But, um, so I, I want to continue down on that uh, line of questioning about uh, the uh, the different LMSs than Moodle. If you have different LMS than Moodle, so 
we do too uh, at, at the Delft University of Technology, and um, uh, we have on one end uh, the uh, we we want to have a an LMS that's closed off for teachers to have a private interaction with students. We also have the need for a uh, a repository for open educational resources like MoodleNet could be. And then in between, we also have the desire for having a place where we can, um, uh, uh, where we can publish open courses that uh, do not require any guidance. So uh, we could publish something as a course that, that students or learners could go through themselves without, any, uh, without ha having to have a teacher in between somewhere. So what would be an in-between, what, what would be a solution for that in-between phase? Do, would you have a suggestion for that? Do you want to take it? Um, yeah, so I would install a Moodle for that in-between phase and just open it up. Um, but because I hope your course isn't just text, right? <laughs> good. So if it's interactive, has activities and all the good collaborative stuff, uh, then yes, Moodle probably is the best option, or whatever other thing you're using. Install a second option, a second version of that. I just want to say with MoodleNet, it is a open source project, system and project, like it's true open source. So anybody who wants to extend it to integrate with anything else, very welcome. But what I, what I think we have here is the ability to leverage the Moodle popularity um, globally to get this well established because it's a Moodle, Moodle net is now one or two clicks away from every Moodle course page in the world um, by default so that means a lot of people are going to be are already flooding into the system and if we get enough critical mass hopefully the content is very high quality and then it's worth for any of any of you to extend MoodleNet to do whatever you need it to do. That's the, the plan. Yes, any more questions? There's, there's, there's room for one more and then you can actually go up and prepare. Maybe. It's just, just one quick question. It's, it's very uh, simple. It's just what kind of content can we upload on the page? I saw it's like kind of HTML or web page. Is it possible to upload like uh, video, GIF, any mime images? Type, any mime type at all that's recognizable via, via a web browser, essentially. Yep. Okay, great. That's it. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. We're around if you want to come see us and speak to us and talk about this. Thank you.